Depends yeah. we never might be silent. <laughs> this would be a bit, potentially have been a very different race if this had been the plan all the yeah. way along for the tour. Yeah, we'd say if you'd been announced a runner in this race earlier, you'd have half the number of runners here and not necessarily both the Giggins Town races running. So I think it's probably caught a few people by surprise. And certainly when you're looking at this race a couple of weeks ago, an Alpha off, I think, would favour it for the race. Uh, it's changed dramatically in the last week. That's what happens when you've got a Ryanair as well as a champion chase and a gold cup. <laughs> yeah, I know you're not an advocate, are you, dear? Mm, well, I mean, I, I accept it as a fait accompli. I don't think yeah. I'm, I'm trying to get it uprooted out of the festival. No, and uh, one thing I would say is, this is a proper grade one. Mm. We've got the tour, we've got Road to Riches, who was third in last year's Gold Cup. Alpha Roth, you know, he's a genuine top-class chaser and has been operating at that level for a while. They wouldn't be running in the other race, that's the point. It's, it's taken money, the horses out oh, yeah. of the Gold Cup. That's the, it's not that this isn't a good race, it's, what it, it's the effect it has on other races is, is the problem, I think. Anyway, let's concentrate on the race in hand, shall we? At the start of the show, you were both saying that basically you were going to look at the tour without all of the yak. You're going to put to one side everything that's been said and just look at what he's done. Yeah, and if you do that, you've got to say that with a clear round of jumping, he wins, and he wins impressively. And I, for one, am really excited about seeing him under what I regard as his optimum conditions. I think, potentially, I'm not saying he will do this, but potentially, we could see the performance of the week in, in ratings terms, with the tour running over two mile five at the track where he's at his very best, or at least he's produced his very best in the past. So it's a pretty exciting proposition. And with those other highly rated horses, BHA rated 165 Road to Riches, the same Alpha Roth, we've got the potential for a big, big rating to be achieved with the tour. And I, I like I say, I for one hope that he, he goes and does it. Any concerns? Well, no, the concern is whether he runs his race or not. As you say, everything that Martin said, I completely concur. We know he loves the place, we know he loves the ground. The distance, you know, takes away your worry about three miles if you have one. And yeah, everything's absolutely perfect. And I definitely agree, this is a superb horse race he's got coming up. So I don't want to put that race down because so we've got Nick last year's goal. Gold Cup third, we've got this year's Peter Barra Chase winner, uh, we've got some really top class horses in opposition, it's a super race. He's been in to become the first horse since Bobsworth to win three successive races at successive festivals and again also like Bobsworth uh, at grade one level. Stuart's just joined us. Yes, I hung around in the parade ring after we recorded our sequence just to keep an eye on Votor particularly because I reported that he was getting warm. Well, that didn't get any worse as he went out. He was pretty much in the same shape as he went as when we saw him on camera. Dinas was starting to sweat late on. He was getting quite warm. Smashing was getting very edgy and indeed they took an extra turn of the parade ring and he went out last with two handlers. He was very much on his toes. And they also took him, took him back to the race course stables initially Did as they? well. Yeah. Okay, right. Yeah, well he was getting pretty stirred up. Okay, thank you very much Stuart. So let's move on to Rose to Richie, who of course was third in last year's Gold Cup and Noel Me Mead is so disappointed that uh, Gingstown, the owners who have the final call, decided that they were going to go for the Ryanair rather than the Gold Cup this year. Yeah, I have a feeling that my, I, look, he, he absolutely would, he would have had his conditions in the Gold Cup and he ran such a super race last year despite the rain coming. You know, I can understand entirely why um, you know, there'd be an element of frustration. Equally, I think he's got the pace for two mile five. He's also going to be ridden prominently, too prominently last time in Ireland and that was not Ryan Cooper's finest hour. He's better than that. He's a good horse. He started this season, you know, and gave the impression he's as good as ever. And he's a genuine crew one horse. Let's move on to Alpha Roth. Uh, the question he's got to answer is whether he can reproduce his best efforts, which uh, he tends to be at his best on his seasonal debut, but he has had a good long break. Yeah, I think that would be the positive, wouldn't it? He's won on his seasonal debut 2011, 12, 13, 14 and 15. But I think the key is not the time of year, not that it's seasonal debut. I think it's just keeping him fresh and Dan Skelton sensibly has given him 82 days off since the King George primed for this meeting and I I think he will be at his best he's a really really solid top class horse that deserves to be in grade one chases and has been in competitive in lots of grade one chases over the years um, so he if he gives his running should give you a good guide to this form I think. Falsalido who was 15 lengths behind the tour in the JLT this time last year um, errors has crept into his jumping. Well, it cost him last time dearly. He was in the process of putting up a career best effort in the Irish Gold Cup. Would have finished well in front of the road to riches and would have been first or second, depending on your point of view. He was given the perfect ride that day, or a more patient ride in a race where they went too fast. But nonetheless, that gave the impression that he is as good as ever. And I wouldn't, uh, certainly wouldn't pass it past him, but he's not as far behind this time. Uh, very quickly, jockey change later on. Full shift. Uh, Mark Walsh, not Barry Geraghty. Just wanted to get it in. Important jockey change. How about the likes of 
Jack and Desirle, who's been supplemented into this race. Jostis Hill, who was able to control his jumping, controlling the race last time. He, he was able to control his jumping. Cheap pieces added today. Whether he can do that in this much more competitive scenario, we'll wait and see. It has been his Achilles heel since day one of offences with Jossie's Hill. Taquan de Sol, good to see him back in that handicap last time out at Warwick. Um, he would have finished a lot, good deal closer in this race last year, but for a blunder at the fourth last fence when he was just starting to creep in to contention. Dinast would be another that if he was to bounce back to his very best form, which came in this race two years ago when he won it, um, he would have a chance, but he has had a bit of an indifferent campaign. And how about Vibrato Valtat? The trip, I can see why they're trying it. He's just below top class of two miles, worth a try uh, further. Interesting if he gets it. And the likes of Village Vic and Anna Gossi represent top handicap for him. Richard Toyles has the call for these two centrepiece races, the first of them at least. This is the Ryanair chase. Let's join Richard. So runners approaching the starter here full extent of the spur this time and they're off and racing. Anna Cotti and also Rota Riches are amongst those prominent with Village Vic as they race towards the first. Vatour is towards the right hand side as they prepare to rise at the first of the fences. Taking de Soy is towards the back early on in company with Champagne West and Oscar Rock as they head on towards the second. Road to Riches and smashing out wider with Village Vic are the first three to rise. Just ahead of Jossie's Hill, Alpha Rock. Batur is in sixth place. Oscar Rock made a mistake towards the tail of the field. Dynast is well back with Champagne West, Taking de Soy and also Captain Conan. Midfield early on for the likes of Val Salido and Gil Gamboa as the leaders all soar over the third fence. So they move away now with Village Vic out in front by a length and they have this long run that will swing them back towards home and out in front Village Vic leads by a length from in second place at Road to Riches. In third is smashing the grey on the outside of Jossie's Hill. The tour has made a little bit of progress on the inside running rail to sit in fifth place as they make the bend. Alpha Roth and Gil Gamboa are the next two. Anna Cotti having jumped off prominently is drifted back to midfield with Vibrato, Valtat and Captain Conan. And then Val Salido, uh, Taquin de Soy in company with Dinas, Champagne West and Oscar Rock as they reach the first of the fences up the home straight. And again, they're all over safely. All plain fences to date, and this is no exception, as Village Vic out in front leads Road to Riches and Smashing. Vatour is now in fourth place. Alpha Roth didn't get very high there, and Champagne West is getting a little outpaced at the rear of the field. The pace is an honest one, as Village Vic leads by a length from in second place, Road to Riches. Smashing comes next. Vatour Pink Jacket towards the inside in fourth place, then Jossie's Hill in fifth, Gil Gamboa and Alpha Roth as the leaders reach the next. Takim de Soy landed a bit awkwardly and Champagne West is struggling to keep up now at the rear of the field. Village Vic then towards the next obstacle with Road to Riches. Matures now moves through into third place. His smashings in fourth as they turn away. So Village Vic in the courted colours leads from the maroon and white colours of Road to Riches. Vatour is right in behind them in third in the pale jacket. Smashing the grey on the outside. Uh, Jossie's Hill is between the two greys with Alpha off on the rails. Gil Gamboa comes next. A couple of lengths to Captain Conan. Anna Cotti next ahead of Val Salido as they turn away. Vibrato Val tapped with Dinast. Takin de Soy. Then Oscar Rock and seven lengths back to Champagne West. So another plain one before the water jump for the solitary time. Village Vic out in front in company with Road to Riches. Uh, Vatour just slightly brushed through the top there but is still travelling strongly just behind the leading pair. Then towards the outside we have Smashing, Gil Gamboa, Jossie's Hill and Alpha Rock with Captain Conan next with Val Salido as they step over the water jump. Uh, midfield for Dinast, Oscar Rock's beginning to struggle towards the tail of the field and Champagne West is well behind. So making their progress on towards the first of the ditches, Village Vic soars over it with smashing road to riches and Batur have a coming together in midfield. Anna Cotti towards the tail is now being ridden along as they reach another plain fence. Village Vic out in front just had to stretch for that. Batur jumps up well as smashing makes a mistake. Road to riches is still uh, there on the outside. Champagne West pulled up before taking that fence as they turn now to another open ditch. It's Village Vic with Batur right on the leader's tail now in second place. Road to riches over in third, in fourth place, smashing. Then Alpha Roth, Gil Gamboa, Jossie's Hill, Val Salido, Vibrato, Valtat trying to make a little bit of progress. This is the fence at the top of the hill. And out in front, Village Vic Vatour and Road to Riches. They step over it in front and they'll begin the turn downhill towards the fourth last fence with Alpha Roth in fourth place. Then in fifth is smashing. Jossie's Hill, the white cap of Val Salido improving from well back as now Vatour moves through to the lead as they take the next fence. Vatour over Vibrato Valtat is a 4-4 four four from the finish as they now begin the run downhill towards the third 
third last. It is Mature Pink Jacket tanking along. Road to Riches, last year's Gold Cup third in second. The Grey Alpha off. Village Vic has run a mighty race, is still on the premises. And then Val Salido, who's creeping into it. Mature lands over that obstacle with Ruby Walsh still sitting quietly. Road to Riches, however, hasn't given up the chase. Then Alpha off. Village Vic, Val Salido, they turn for home. Mature and Road to Riches locked together here in the Ryanair. Alpha off is three lengths back. An inch of rain is let out. Vatour grabs it with gay abandon and moves to the second last, breezing along. Road to Riches, Alpha off, then Val Salido. Vatour is over the second last. Road to Riches is three lengths down, then Alpha off down towards the final fence in the Ryanair. And Vatour comes towards it with a five length lead, steadies into it, is over the other side. Road to Riches second, Alpha off, Val Salido, all quality horses, but they can't can't get near Vatour, who's going to land a festival hat-trick. Another winner for Ruby Walsh. Vatour, different gear in the Ryanair. Valsalino's up for second, ahead of the same owner's road to riches. Fourth for Dinas, Gil Gamboa, and then Takim Desoy. Probably the best Ryanair winner in history. He hasn't got a long history this race, but Vatour was a magnificent winner of the JLT last year, and he is a magnificent winner of the Ryanair this time around. He brings the first Irish winner in the history of this race, even many favourites. Ruby Walsh on board, a 51st Cheltenham Festival success, a sixth of the week, a sixth also for Willie Mullins, and Rich Ritchie brings up a fourth success for the owner as well. In second is Val Salido, who's just nabbed Road to Riches, and you've got to feel for Road to riches because he was the one that was laying it down to the tour and sadly he's just faded up the hill and he's been Nick had second just taken from his grasp by Val Salido. so it's a one two for Willie Mullins David Mullins on board third is road to riches third again in a grade one an excellent performance for him for Brian Cooper and Noel Mead and in fourth place is Alpha Roth the grey and he has run another excellent race for Dan Skelton his team in excellent form John Hales of course the owner of that Harry Skelton on board but the winner is the tour you were both, I think, Stephen Martin, anticipating what could be a very, very good performance, and you've just got one. Yeah, that is absolutely fantastic. You won't see many better performances than that all week. He's beaten grade one horses on the bridle, and you just don't see that at this level, really. He's a seriously, seriously talented horse, and it's fantastic to see him back to his very, very best, or at his very, very best anyway, under his optimum conditions, and he could have won it by twice, maybe even three times as far if the buttons had really been pressed, and he's been pushed by Road to Riches, he's put it up to him, and I agree, I think he would probably have finished second if he'd yeah. kind of been ridden to finish second, but he's really put it up to Vettor, and he's been cracked, hasn't he, and Vettor, he just skews a little bit there, but he's jumping all the way around, was exuberant, and he's just a, he's just a fantastic chaser isn't he, over a variety of trips. A bit like when Sprinter Sacra just eased past under so. There's a moment here, isn't there? Brian Cooper's asking Road to Riches. Road to Riches is a terrific horse, 